All right, so let's do uh, this example here. We've got uh, an I-beam and we're adding it to something. Let's say another I-beam. Uh, so dimensions, it's uh, 100 millimeters wide, 150 millimeters uh, kind of high, and then uh, one meter long. We're welding it with uh, some E6010 rod. So that particular rod has an SU of 60 KSI and an SY of 80, uh, 48 KSI. And uh, you'll, in the configuration of the weld, we're just welding the top and the bottom here. So again, kind of what I scribbled here. Uh, so, uh, and we're using just a fillet weld that is uh, ground, ground flat. I'm sure you guys remember your weld symbology from 233. So uh, we want to figure out what side of what sort of weld size we would need for either a static load with factor of safety of 4.0, and if we're using a force of a five kilonewtons, or uh, a situation where we're varying the load from zero to one kilonewton for a fatigue safety factor of 1.75. And again, that's indefinite life. When you say fatigue safety factor, then you don't specify the lifespan, assume indefinite life. So here, uh, you'll note that the welds aren't returned. We're not assuming that the returns are well, uh, that the welds are returned. Which, would, you know, like if you're just welding an I-beam to another I-beam, you wouldn't really say have room to kind of wrap it around there, right? At least not, not keep it as a fillet weld. Which uh, you know doesn't really doesn't really do the purpose. So uh, our effective length there, that's going to be the two hundred. You know, strictly speaking, it's going to be the two hundred millimeters minus the four H. So if we want to, because you know we're we're talk, we're we're lopping off uh, a value of H each time we kind of. Uh, Hit one of the hit one of the ends of the welds. So there's four ends because we've got two welds that we're using. So the direct load, of course, that is just going to be the force uh, divided by the effect by the area by the effective area. So the effective area of the weld is Le times T. So of course T is 0.707 H. Le is 200 minus 4h, which gives us an effective area of 141.4 millimeters h minus 2.83h squared, which uh, that's complex and annoying. So if we if we want to make a bit of a simplifying assumption. Kind of the worst case scenario that we're going to see is if the uh, Le is rather large. Sorry, if the if the H is rather large, it's going to reduce the Le uh, the worst amount. You know, the thicker the welds, the thicker the welds are, the more length you're going to be basically lopping lopping off there. So basically, if we kind of assume a relatively large H. And find out what the uh, kind of how that affects the length, uh, the effective length versus the length. If we kind of assume that's going to be the worst case scenario, so if we just use that ratio, uh, then uh, essentially we can, uh, uh, you know, then essentially as long as long as we end up. Uh, at the end, calculating a value that is reasonably close to that, or you know, less than that, less than that at the very least. And if it's reasonably close, the bet, you know, the the more accurate our assumption is, uh, then uh, we can uh, what you call it. Uh, uh, that you know, we, we can we can make a we can treat that as a reasonable assumption. So uh, essentially, if you look back at the I beam, the width. Or sorry, the thickness of the flanges there is 10 millimeters. So if we're going to be assuming that the uh, 
leg size of the welds, the H was as large as the, that component, component thickness. So basically, you know, if we're if we're looking at kind of the corner of the of the I beat, and this is what's welded to. And we're basically assuming that the weld's taken up this entire size. So it's basically as big as you can get a fill. You know, you can't you can't can't build a fillet weld that goes like this when the component you're welding it to is uh, is smaller than that, right? So uh, if you have an H of 10 millimeters, then the effective length that you're going to be using is the 200 minus 4 times the 10 millimeters, so 160 millimeters. So the effective area is going to be equal to the uh, so in that situation, uh, we, we, we can just use that effective length and plug it into our, our effective area uh, calculation. So 120, sorry, 160 millimeters times the 0.707H. So that'll be uh, 113 millimeters H. And then of course when H is equal to 10 millimeters, then that's kind of an, this is an exact solution instead of an approximation. But anyways, uh, so what we can do, we can find our direct, uh, the shear caused by the direct load, the F divided by that area. So F divided by 113 millimeters H is equal to F over, uh, F over H times 8.85 times 10 to the negative 3 per millimeter. So we got that. Uh, we also got our bending stress, so our, our tau triple prime. So that's equal to, of course, our moment times the distance from the centroid divided by the, the i. So again, for i, we've got the pre-calculated cases. So we're using case 3 from Shigley's. Shigley's 9.2. So basically, you know, it just gives us our geometry here, uh, D and B for two welds that are separated from a distance. And again, uh, when we're talking bending, the axis that we're talking about is important. So that's, that's about this axis. So I there is equal to T times the T times B times D, D squared over 2. So again, if we use this, if we use basically the same logic that we used up here to kind of figure out what the ratio of the LE versus L is, then that gives us basic that it gives us like a, what our B is. Uh, so uh, we're still lopping off kind of the, the corners there uh, for the uh, tapering of the fillet. So for that, we basically just use the B is equal to to prox, you know, it's going to be approximately 90 mil, uh, sorry, 80 millimeters. It's the 100 millimeters flopping off the, the 10 on either side. D stays the same, D is still the 150 millimeters. And then T, of course, is still the 0.707H. Then we've got our I beam, uh, BC is just the distance from the centroid uh, to the well, where the weld is. So that'll be 75, uh, 75 centi uh, sorry, 75 millimeters. So yeah, our I, plugging that all in, that is equal to, no, I guess I should have put a line here. <laughs> the I is equal to that. Uh, the uh, 636 uh, six times 10 to the 3 millimeters to the third H. So plugging all that stuff into this uh, uh, tau triple prime equation, we get uh, F times the uh, 100, oh, sorry, 1000 millimeters, that's our moment, uh, times the C, 75 millimeters divided by the uh, 636 times 10 to the 3 millimeters uh, cubed h. So that ends up being 0.118 f per millimeter h. 
So you notice that is a far larger number than what we had up here for our uh, direct shear, uh, uh, the direct, uh, the stress caused by the direct load. So basically, you know, if we, if we try to figure out, you know, the, you know, the equivalent based upon the Pythagoras' theorem, the other one just evaporates into rounding errors from this one. So we can, we can just use that directly. So that's going to be our stress. So for the first case, the, we're calculating it against the ultimate strength. Uh, it, it's a static load. We're calculating against the ultimate strength of the weld. So if we got the SU of the electrode is 60 KSI, that is four, uh, four, 414 megapascals. And then, of course, that's the tensile. Uh, ultimate load, so we need to convert that to shear. We're talking steel, so the ultimate load for shear is about 0.8 of the ultimate load. So that gives us 331 MPa. And of course, our load was given as uh, 5 kilonewtons. So if we want a factor of safety of 4, uh, that's just uh, taking uh, four, the 4.0 is equal to the ultimate load in shear divided by the stress caused, the shear stress caused by the load. So 4.0 is equal to 3, 30, 333 MPa divided by that up here. So we, we can rearrange that, solve for H. H is equal to 4.0 times 1.118 times 5,000 5, newtons divided by uh, 331 megapascal millimeters. So those units all cancel out to be 7.1 millimeters. So that'd be the size of the weld that we need to have in order to uh, be able to carry that load with the safety of factor four. Uh, next step for B, if we're trying to find our uh, find the size of weld we need in order to attain that particular uh, safety factor for a load of, you know, variable load. We have to find our SN SNS. So again, SNS is equal to SN prime times CL times CGs times CS times CR. So CL in this case, of course, like all welds, we're using the uh, the the shear CL. Uh, for CG, point, uh, point 0.9 is reasonable. You know, it kind of we're assuming that the weld size is reasonably close to what we saw up here. Uh, CS, we can calculate that as point 0.9. So again, that was because it was specified that the weld was ground. So if we look at the table in juveniles, we end up getting. Uh, I'll, actually, I'll, I'll go. I'll go ahead and grab that so we can have a. I can show you where we're looking at here. So that is. That's going here. So we are using a, a weld rod with a tensile strength of six sixty ksi. So that's that's the far left on left on the. Uh, on the x-axis, and then we're going up to this line, this line here, the, the fine ground or commercially polished. So if it was just machined, uh, then we'd be using 0.8, but it said it was ground, so we're going to use with 0.9. And then CR, they didn't specify what CR was. Oh, sorry, didn't specify a particular reliability, so we're going to use the CR1. And then, of course, SN prime is always going to be equal to, oh, well, is usually going to be equal to 0.5 SU. So that'll be uh, 207 MPa. So uh, throw all that together, we end up getting a value for the SNS of 97.2 MPa. 
The other values that we can use, we got our SUS 331, we've got our SYS, that's taking the SY that we had and multiplying it by 0.58 to basically convert it to a von Mises equivalent for shear. And that gives us uh, that gives us a 72, sorry, 27.8 KSI, which converts to one, uh, 192 MPA. So we can just draw our Goodman graph here. So again, uh, we're varying our load from uh, zero to F, zero to some value. So it's uh, in that situation, uh, the loading line is just a straight line with a slope of one here. Got our SYS line here. SYS, SYS line, we've got our SNS and our SUS line here. So our failure envelope is here. So that means that our safety factor, you know, is based upon kind of this line segment here. So with an F, yeah, with an F max of one kilonewton and an F min of zero kilonewtons, our amplitude of the force is equal, sorry, our, the amplitude and the mean of the force are the same things. That's equal to 400, 500 newtons. So therefore the, sh the shear amplitude and the shear mean are also the same thing. And both of those are, equal, are found by taking that 500 kilonewtons and plugging them into the F equation for the stress that we had solved for. So 0.118 times 500 newtons divided by millimeters h. That gives us 59 newton per, newtons per millimeter per h. So, and we're, you know, we're trying to solve for a safety fact, uh, so solve based upon a particular safety factor. So again, one over the factor of safety is equal to Kf times the stress amplitude divided by SNS plus KF times the mean amplitude divided by SUS. So since our load is completely transverse, uh, the we're going to use a particular factor of safety. So again, we'll just go to our weld, we'll, we'll just go to our, our stress concentration, sorry, a chaos, not factor of safety. So uh, uh, we're going to go to our little, our little diagram here and we'll be using a KF of 1.5. Since again, the none of the forces that are induced are gonna be operating parallel. And this isn't a sharp cornered T weld or anything like that. It's not a butt weld. So let's see here. Um, moving back here. So we got a KF of 1.5. So Repeating, just repeating this equation here, and then we plug in our values. Factor of safety we're trying to attain was 1.75. Our KF and our tau alpha, our tau amplitude, and then our KF and our tau mean, both of those are the same things. So we can just, we can just multiply those together and kind of factor them out uh, to get that. So when, 1.5 times 59 is equal to 88.5. And then we got the, just the, the one over the 97.2, which is our SNS, and the one over our 30, 331 MPA, which is our SUS. So from there, we can solve for H. So our H is gonna be equal to 1.75 times the 88.5 Newtons per millimeter times 0 0.0133 per MPA. That'll give us 2.1 Newtons per millimeter MPA, which once you cancel all the units out, you know, sub in uh, Newtons per millimeter for our MPA, 2.1 millimeters. So then, uh, then you're gonna to have to recall that you know the general guideline that in order to avoid thermal effects from causing problems, 
Uh, the minimum weld size also has to be determined based upon the size of the components you're welding. So based upon that guideline, for a 10 millimeter size component, the size of the flanges that you're using, you should be using a minimum uh, five millimeter weld size. So that, uh, that's basically going back to the chart in the welds lecture one. Uh, let's see here. Where did I have that? Yeah, so recommendations for avoiding thermal uh, thermal effects from causing problems. And we're basically we're basically in here. That's within the half an inch to so quarter inch half inch range. So three sixteenths of an inch, which when we're talking millimeters, that rounds to five millimeters. So yeah, that would be what we recommend to attain that requirement for uh, fitting.